Hello and welcome to a demonstration of the COVID Information Commons. Perhaps you've already listened to the video and audio about the COVID Information Commons, which is available on the homepage. Please feel free to do so. The purpose of this video is to provide a demonstration and how to use the COVID Information Commons. The COVID Information Commons in its phase one, which is launching in July of 2020, provides two search capabilities into the public NSF award database for COVID rapid awards, as well as other COVID related awards from the National Science Foundation. The focus on COVID rapid awards is obvious in the middle of the homepage, where you can see that you can click on these icons to find NSF COVID rapid grants by NSF directorate. This is the first safe search capability into the NSF Public COVID Rapid Awards database. Here we provide customized selections by NSF directorate of the COVID Rapid Awards. One directorate is biological sciences, the others are computer and information science and engineering, education and human resources, engineering, geosciences, mathematical and physical sciences, social, behavioral, and economic sciences, and Office of the Director. You can click on any of these icons to look at the types of awards available in that directorate. For example, if we look at the Office of the Director, we can find the COVID Information Commons Award, the COVID Rapid Award that was provided to fund the creation of this COVID Information Commons. Here in the NSF search site, you can see that we're in the NSF organization on the left of the Office of the Director, using keywords COVID and Rapid, all capital, <laughs> like in Boolean style. And then we can see this rapid award. We can click on it to see the entire award, the public information made available. We can see the award number 2028999. We can see the name of the award, a rapid award for COVID information comments, the NSF organization, the initial and latest amendment date if the award was changed, the award instrument is the standard grant, the program manager at NSF, the start date May 15th, the end date October 31st, 2020 estimated, the awarded amount to date $200,000, the principal investigator, as well as the principal investigator's email address for ease of collaboration. If there were co-PIs, they would be listed here as well. The sponsoring institution, the NSF programs, program reference codes and element codes, and the abstract for the award. So you can see what the goal of the award is. So this information is available for all of the NSF COVID rapid awards by directorate through this search mechanism. The second and exciting advanced search mechanism provided for the COVID information commons is the COVID research explorer. If you click on the blue button over the COVID area where it says click for COVID research explorer ML maps, you can enter the explorer tool which is powered by machine learning engines. This one specifically is a Lingo 4G Explorer tool. Here you can see that we search for the coronavirus or COVID awards, as well as allowing for some misspellings that may be in some of the award information. And we can see a tree map of these awards clustered by different themes and topical areas or keywords. Here, for example, novel coronavirus, social distancing, they've clustered these together through the machine learning algorithms. And here, if we were to look at this area, we might look and say, well, this is quite interesting. I wonder what they're doing at SUNY at Buffalo. Let's see, I click on that, and then I can go over to the right-hand side of the screen, and I can actually see the award information. It's a rapid award. The title is Psychological Distance and Risk Perception Related to the 2019 Novel Coronavirus Outbreak. The award number, the amount they received, for the award, $197,402 US. The institution is the State University of New York at Buffalo. The PI here is Janet Yang. Here's her email address and the abstract. Let's say you're looking at this and you would actually like to see a little bit more. Let's see, I know what country this is in. You know what I really wanna know? I wanna make sure I know what state this is in because I'm looking at some regional implications. So I'll put that in the title. I would also, um, like to see more of the abstract. That really wasn't enough for me. I really want to see more of what they're doing on this project. So I'm going to say show up to 2,000 characters per field. And I'm going to save and show the documents. 
And here you can see that we can see it's in the state of New York. It added the state as well as a much longer abstract. You can do this for any of these awards. For example, here's another one we clicked on at Yale University. Here's another one we clicked on at the University of Arkansas. Here's another one that we're clicking on at University of Florida. And so this is a very interesting opportunity to identify potential collaborators in your areas of interest, or perhaps do research about what research is occurring across these different areas. The other type of map that's available through this Explorer tool is a topographical map. This is interesting to look at what are the major themes in the awards that are being granted for COVID and coronavirus. And perhaps what are not the major themes? It's what you see and what you don't see that's important. So as you use this tool, there are other options. As you can see in the tree map, we were looking at this polygonal view. It could be that you're more comfortable with a different view. There's a rectangular view I consider more similar to the periodic table of the elements, and so you could have that type of view. It could also be that you actually have certain award numbers you're looking for. So as compared to labeling by institution in each of the little boxes, you could label by um, award number, you could label by amount, um, you could label you know, by PI. There are a lot of ways that you could label, which is very interesting. And you may have some collaborators that you would want to see, like what is Janet Yang doing? I usually work with her as an example. Now what's interesting here is if you look at the query on the left and you want to get a little advanced with this, you can actually use it to identify specific research areas that you are working in or you're interested in. So using Boolean algebra, what we do is make sure we have all of this tied up nicely with our parentheses. Always count your parentheses when you're doing, uh, when you're doing queries. And let's say we're working in the area of mutations. So we would use all capitals and, and we would say mutation. And then we would analyze. And here we would see there are 23 documents in scope. Not all of them are clustered. They didn't have a lot of the same topical names. And remember here, we actually just changed this. to I want to see who the PIs are that are working in this area. Perhaps you met some people at a conference in this area. And so this would allow you to look at that. So let's say I know Harold Vincent Poor. I look and say, yep, he's at Princeton, and this is what he's working on. Very interesting. So let's say, you know, I don't know all these people. I'd rather go back and look. Um, I'd label it by institution. I'd like to see where they are. Oh, that's very interesting. Oh, Rutgers, NYU. Oh, here's somebody, you know, closer to me at Clemson, let's say, or UCSD. So this allows you to change the parameters in the query so you can find your potential collaboration opportunities. I'll show you another example. Let's say that you're working in the area of knowledge graphs. So since that's two words, what we would do is say end knowledge and graph. We would analyze, and then we would see some of the knowledge graph work that's going on. Here, for example, at UCSD of University of California at San Diego, we can see this rapid award. The amount was $200,000. Uh, the PIs, their email addresses, and the abstract. So we hope that you find the use of the, the COVID information commons very beneficial for the work that you're doing today and in the future. Thank you for visiting us and the best of luck.